Welcome to Famous Fortunes. I hope you are well. Welcome back to the greatest show on Earth, Famous Fortunes, with your host, Lord of the Orbage. Lord Famous Fortunes, back today, Moon Day. Welcome to Moon Day on Famous Fortunes. Uh, I hope you're having a good one. What are we going to look at today? Meghan Markle's insane hunger for publicity. Two shots in one day. Thank you, Murky Meg. Different clothing. Uh, it's it, what was that place again? The, the the Italian restaurant, the trendy Italian restaurant in Montecito. I think it is again. Uh, I forget the name of it. Cappuccinos or something. Or whatever. Uh, it, it was one of them. It's it's a little bit odd now. I mean, you've got Catherine needing some R and R. You've got the king having some time out. Uh, you've got Prince William stepping up and speaking up for uh, a certain. Uh, a certain place in the Middle East, which I, I commend him for doing so. And I think it's about time, to be honest with you. Perhaps we should do a reading on that as well. Um, I, I really commend him for speaking up and saying something because he's gone against the grain of many official voices in uh, Western countries. And I commend him for saying what he said because we've spoken the truth. He's spoken the truth. Uh, I really do think so. So I commend Prince William. And my respect for Prince William has gone up immeasurably since he put that statement out. Uh, so I just want to say that publicly. I think uh, credit for him. Everyone needs to give him credit big time for saying what he's saying uh, because at the end of the day, it's next level what's happening. So, uh, you know, the real is there's real issues going on. I didn't want to say anything because obviously it's, you know, there's a certain wind that's blowing, but, uh, you know, he's come out and said it, so I'm going to stick behind the future king on this one. I think it's a credit to him for saying so. Uh, many people are already attacking him on sort of, oh, you can't say that. You're not, you know, you're interfering and all the rest of it. It's like, oh, okay, all right. Well, all right, let's jump in. Let's have a look at Megan's insane hunger for publicity. What is behind this? What is driving her to do this uh, publicity drive twice a day? What is going on? Is she, what is it? What is behind this? Why is she doing this right now? Cards are hot. What is going on? The Tower card, the Two of Wands, the Prince of Wands, the Ten of Cups, and the Page of Cups. Underlying energy is the Five of Wands. Okay, so she's, there is an energy here she's competing. This is a competitive energy here with the Five of Wands. She feels as if she's competing now, what, for attention? What is it? What is she competing for? Who's she fighting in her mind? This is a sort of the endless battle, I suppose, of Megan's mind. Her against the world. Uh, it's it's look. She's part. It's it's a partnership here, or some type of focus on Harry and her and needs. She's fighting for focus on Harry and her and the, and the, her family. That's what I'm seeing. Um, the Tower card is an interesting card here because we're talking about an energy of. I mean, this this could be very much crisis energy. And in this context, it would be her wanting to capitalize on a crisis, I would imagine, for herself, Harry and the, her family. And sort of, this is about... It's not about money, interestingly. I'm not saying this is about money so much. More so about goodwill. I'm going to call it goodwill towards herself, Harry. And I mean, it's certainly... Do you think it's achieving that objective... Are you feeling goodwill towards them because of this timing? I think it's completely... I, I, I don't understand how her mind works. Everything must be sort of, I don't know, wired the wrong way because uh, I don't know how you could... All the people suffering in your extended family come out and, I don't know, well, sort of hog the limelight, I guess, under these times. I, I sort of... Why not do three a day? Why not, why not get out there and do three shots a day? Why not five? I mean, why not ten? Think about it. Why not ten? And I suppose you get to do a, a lot of work. I mean, one change of clothes and a drive to another area is probably manageable. But, uh, you know, doing it more than twice a day is probably becoming like serious work, right? So, I mean, that's a problem. Um, all right. Uh, you know, I see this as a, a goodwill drive. Goodwill hunting. That's what I'm seeing. This is goodwill hunting. Now, um, could I be wrong? 
Could I be wrong? Could my interpretation of Descartes be off? I mean, possibly, but I don't think so. Now, let's focus on this crisis. Does, to sort of triangulate and see if we're on track, does she, is she taking advantage of the sort of crisis in the extended family? I noticed there's a lot of similarities. Just want to make a point here. There's a lot of similarities between the the coat in the restaurant. If you, if you recall Heath Ledger's Joker and he wore the long purple coat. I don't know. I just feel there's real Joker energy there. But yeah, it's just one man's opinion. And the, the other photo with the guy in the blue, the guy in the blue t-shirt. I mean, you know, the stripes behind. I mean, you look at the thumbnail. Look at the thumbnail. I mean, look. It's probably, I know it's just the shot, right? It's just the shot. That, you know, the incident was, I mean, what's the sort of energy there? It's uh, pretty strange. I don't, yeah. And he, oh, he's in the first photo as well. He's the same guy in both photos. So he's following her around, basically doing the photos. From behind as well, like, whoop. okay, they obviously didn't mind him in the photos. Let's focus. Is she capitalizing in on this sort of disaster energy? Cards are hot. Uh, seven of coin. Ten of wands. Six of wands. Queen of cups. Two of cups. And five of cups. Oh, here's the conflict again. Five of wands. So, is she capitalizing? Is she capitalizing? Look, here it is. Here's... Here, the, this is her. She's trying to get... I mean, this is about having people, you know, like her. This is... This is comes up regularly. It's, again, it's not about money. We're asking about this sort of... Looking at the circumstances, reviewing the circumstances, what can be done here? What can be done? How can this be utilized? Uh, and how can I how can I sort of be successful or you know come out not necessarily on top, but how can I sort of uh, parade myself around? Uh, she's finding it difficult to to find this. So you know she's pushing through. In other words, she's, I'm just going to do it. I'll do it once. I'll do it twice. Um, you know that'll be my work day. But, you know, it's it's kind of that, it's like that energy. Um, she's pushing through, she's she's forcing it. She's forcing it with the pap shots, which is exactly what's happening. I mean, that's no joke. Um, but it's this sort of energy of she wants people to like her. So I guess any crisis, just go for it. I mean, it's a good time. Obviously, people are going to... It stands to reason people will like her a lot when the king's getting cancer treatment. Catherine's sort of having a long-term recovery process. And she's out there, two pap shots a day. I mean, that's it just, to me, it just, re, you know, it, it engenders um, public adoration to do that in those circumstances, doesn't it? It really does uh, sort of seem like a sort of very, um, you know, effective way to get people to sort of be affectionate towards you and to engender public um I mean, the thing is, even if she went to sort of do something really hardcore emotional, like look after animals or children at this period, I think people are still going to call a bit of BS on that. Uh, and, you know, I have to say as well, it's interesting though. I mean, what do, what do William and Catherine do when they do public engagements versus what is this? A, a, a cafe, a parking lot, uh, you know, all that kind of thing. It, it's sort of, there's a big difference between leaving with a latte in your hand or whatever and, you know, walking in a parking lot versus visiting, you know, like a cancer hospital or something, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, you know what I'm saying? There's a huge difference there. Um, where is WWF when you need them? Do they have sense as well? Are they going to say to her, look, you might need to sort of, if you want to act royal, maybe you need to sort of do some royalish things, but all right, just a humble man's opinion. That's all I'm going to say. Just a humble tea drinker, folks. Just a humble tea drinker. Okay, so there's an energy of capitalization to a degree uh, to get people to like her now does she you know what do, the question is here does she feel people not so keen i mean five of cups it's sort of um you know very sad actually she is she is she fighting for people's love at this point is that what she's who's she fighting with and why is she fighting let's let's investigate that energy Cards are hot. 
Ace of Wands, Six of Coins, uh, Five of Cups, Ace of Coins, and the Death card, the Queen of Wands. Ooh, okay. What's the... The competition's with Catherine. That's it. That's what it is. It's Catherine. She, she's competing with Catherine. The Queen of Wands. Uh, the Queen of Wands. So she's using... Look, the next underlying energy is the Wheel of Fortune. I'd say she's using the sort of... The, circumstantial timing to sort of wage this war or this battle or whatever you want to describe it as but that's what it seems to be she's waging this war this energy this battle uh she is a very very you know the same card here we, we remember we saw the this is next to the the five of wands just before the five of cups it's a very deep sense of um sadness here and that she's not as well liked as Catherine. I mean, that's what I see in a very strong way. And there's a will to to transform, I guess, is it to transform herself into a ah uh, next card to start. Okay, she's transforming herself. She wants to transform herself into a into a Catherine esque figure. So I guess this is the competition. It's a form. I mean, you would call it a form of jealousy, I suppose, wouldn't you? But uh, instead of actualizing herself into what she can be, uh, which is extremely important, right, to walk our own highest path, not the highest path of others, but to walk our own highest path in life, it's an extremely challenging thing to do, to, you know, to sort of actualize why we're here and whatever that may be uh, is extremely difficult. Um, you know, I, 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 made, I said this a long time ago on the show and I still maintain this I think her. I think perhaps her highest path and highest luck in life was, perhaps, to be the wife of Prince Harry, and to be included in the royal family. But I think she blew it, and I think that's a big pain. I think this is where the pain's coming from. But she's saying, "Well, it's because I'm not as good as Catherine, or something along those lines." I think her highest path was to, and and learning lesson was to humble herself, accept that she was the spare's wife, and that was her position, and to to graciously go with it. And the 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 admiration she would have received out of doing so in a gracious and humble manner would have been immense. But no, but alas, here we are. Famous Fortunes, <laughs> many other shows now covering this. Um, and it seems to be very, very focused on uh, Catherine as well. I mean, this is, a, this is a tale as old as time, don't you think, in many ways. We're dealing with some very strong female competition archetypes. Men compete with each other as well, just in different ways. Don't, don't think they don't. I mean, I'm not giving a one-sided message here. We just The subject matter isn't talking about that. This isn't my area of expertise, by the way, women competing with each other. But it certainly does, you know, it does, it does come into it. And, you know, I'd say some very, I could say some very interesting things that perhaps a lot of people that would reflect would agree with me on. But it's, it's pregnant in the subject matter we're discussing. But this stuff does go on. This stuff does go on. And sometimes it's not just the patriarchy you've got to worry about. It's the matriarchy you've got to worry about. Right, right. Am I right, woman? Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of people in, in the audience that will agree on me with this. I mean, look at this. Look at the subject matter. How can you disagree with what's happening? I mean, I think she's even dressing like her in some of these photos. It's really odd, really odd. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the basis of her, um, her, you know, uh, infatuation with Catherine? I guess, for want of a better word, what's the basis of it? Let's see what the tarot has to say. All right. Touching on a few sort of very hot topics today, actually, aren't we? We're touching on some very hot topics today, trying to sort of not hold on to that hot stove for too long, but just a little sort of, you know, a little a little glancing blow, perhaps, but nothing too serious. Cards are hot. Right, we got here the three of wandage. Prince of Pentacles, Seven of Swords, Five of Cups. What's the basis is jealousy here? King of Cups, underlying energy, the lovers. Uh, okay, so it's really, it's about, it's about Catherine and who she's married to, really. I mean, that's kind of what I see here, the lovers and the King of Cups. Uh, again, look at this energy. It's this extreme form of self debasement almost it's like i'm not that i'm less than that's what i feel i'm extremely emotional over this but it's jealousy that's what it is it's jealousy and jealousy and jealousy i'm waiting my lot didn't come in in life 
And this is what I spent. This is, again, this is what I was mentioning just before. Prince Harry being the wife of Harry and, and walking that royal path and living in, you know, or dare I say, humble Frogmore. I mean, a lot of people would be choking on their their coffee right now with me saying humble Frogmore. And you know, in terms of the accommodation, a lot, most people in the in the United Kingdom or the Commonwealth live in. If you think about it, I mean, I'm been watching a lot of show. I mean, you may have heard of Itchy Boots. It's Itchy Boots on YouTube. I'm sure a lot of you watch it, but she's driving through Africa in a motorbike, right? Riding through Africa in a motorbike. The humble accommodation these people live in. Humble accommodation. I mean, I've seen elephants. I've seen some amazing things along the travels, but humble people and, and beautiful people too, in fact, uh, a lot of them. I have to say, really, the heart energy is really radiant. I was watching another channel about Zimbabwe and this person who came from Zimbabwe and immigrated to the UK and has a partner there and all the rest of it. She came in, she was a child and all the rest of it. But she went back to Zimbabwe. And uh, if you've ever been to Zimbabwe, you'll kind of, you can only understand if you've been, if you've been to Great Zimbabwe, if you've been to those places, you know, uh, and you've seen the land and the people and there, the sun shines through their hearts. And you'll know what I mean if you actually, if you've experienced it. But, you know, it's, it's kind of like that sort of energy of, I am, I can't accept not being the top dog. That's where it's really what it is. And I'm, I thought that would come in for me, but it hasn't, you know, you won the second prize. That's what she thinks. Uh, I mean, Frogmore, Frogmore would be palatial to most people on planet earth. Just think about it, but it's not enough. It's, it's not enough. And, and what does the Tao Te Ching say? Those that have, or at least those that know when enough is enough, they'll always have enough. And that's a very true statement. But in any event, uh, I think a lot of people in Zimbabwe or in Africa or whatnot are a lot more happier with the humble things that they have and the freedom in, at least that they have is, you know, and the, the connection to the earth and the connection to all that is, is very strong. Uh, and it's certainly absent in a lot of these cases, but in any event, uh, you know, it wasn't enough. It's jealousy. It's, it's purely jealousy of over, over Catherine and Catherine's partner and her relationship and who she's partnered with. And you know, the future King, uh, it's a very deep sense of sadness and regret that she has that she couldn't secure that for herself. So I guess we're going to see endless path walks now. It's almost like a, this to me is like a, an ancient, um, I don't know. It's like you would, it, it's like a Greek tragedy almost. I would liken it to that, a Greek tragedy where it's like, you know, they're sort of, their fate is to walk the earth endlessly doing patch shots in car parks. Let that be known. I'm going to end the show on that, that thought. I'd love to hear your comments. I'll see you in the comment section.